Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It is Saturday. This is day five of our Advent for uh, the season. And uh, yeah, considering the coming of Christmas and Jesus Christ's incarnation into the world, uh, Isaiah 61 and its surrounding chapters speak to a glorious future for Israel. In the midst of all these passages in Isaiah, we find uh, that we come to Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, where it's written, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. So commentators over the years have looked at this passage and, and wondered if it was the prophet Isaiah himself that he was speaking about in this passage, or maybe it was uh, the, the servant of the Lord who is mentioned so many times prior to this in Isaiah that he's speaking about. Now, 600 years come and go, and then we see a passage in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, and we find the answers to this question. Um, you see, Jesus was... Uh, going into the synagogue, as was his custom, to attend uh, service on the Sabbath. And he visits the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth, and Luke chapter 4 records the event. Um, Nazareth being his village where he was raised, 400 people roughly at that time. Um, Jewish synagogues um, to this day have a long-standing tradition of when they have a synagogue meeting. There is a passage of the Old Testament Torah that is read along with a passage of the prophetic literature or historical literature that is read. And we see Jesus in the synagogue reading from the assigned prophetic passage as the scroll of Isaiah was handed to him. And Luke records it this way. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners. Uh, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and he gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, sometime after this, we see the scriptures in Luke and Matthew. They record that John the Baptist was, was placed in prison by King Herod. And while he was in prison, John sends this, the, his disciples to clarify if Jesus was actually the Messiah or if they should be looking for another. John was probably feeling quite downcast because of being in Herod's dungeon. So he sends his disciples to Jesus, and when the disciples came to Jesus, Jesus replied to them, and he said to, said to them this, Go back and report to John that what you, of what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Jesus also told his own disciples he said in John chapter 8 starting with verse 31 he said to the Jews who had believed in him Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free they answered him we are Abraham's descendants and we have never been slaves of anyone how can you say that we shall be set free and Jesus replied to them truly I tell you Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but this, a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
You see, Jesus, He came into the world to fulfill Isaiah chapter 61. God delights in giving people freedom. The Messiah was sent into the world to testify to the truth. It was for this reason that He was born. Anyone on the side of truth trusts in Him and listens to Him. And to illustrate this to the people, we see the Lord Jesus Christ in His ministry as He walked the world. He healed those who were physically lame, blind, and afflicted with diseases. He set them free from the darkness and oppression that they were bound by. And the Gospels give account to the miraculous work of Jesus as He walked on earth in fulfillment of this great prophetic prophecy in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. There can be no doubt that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Messiah. Isaiah 9, 2 also prophesied concerning Christ. The people walking in darkness have now seen a great light. On those living in the land of the deep darkness, light has dawned. It was recorded in Matthew chapter 4, verse 12, starting, When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he, was, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, Land of Zebulun and Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And from that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This same Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was prophesied about through Isaiah 61, and was born that first Christmas day in Bethlehem, is still opening the eyes of the blind and setting the oppressed and the captives free. For those of us who have come to know the Lord by being born again in the Spirit, we have come to Him and we have turned away from our life of sin. By His grace, we have been given the deposit of His Holy Spirit, guaranteeing our inheritance as sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. There is a life beyond this life that we live in the flesh, that goes on forever, everlasting life. Our eyes have been opened to the truth of God's Word. The living Word of God has set us free, truly. And whom the Son sets free, they shall be free indeed. Though we have not seen Him, we come to love Him. And though we do not see Him now, we believe in Him and we rejoice with an inexpressible and glorious joy now that we are receiving the goal of our faith, the salvation of our, our souls. As the first week of Advent is hope. This is the great hope of the church, and I pray that you would look to Christ Jesus this day as the author and perfecter of your faith, and you would trust in Him, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Lord, I thank you for the people that are out there today that are hearing this message of hope. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as, as, as we approach Christmas 2020, that our hearts would be tuned to the glory of your salvation plan, to the prophecies that were fulfilled, and the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled in you. We thank you, Lord, that you are our living hope. And I pray, God, that you would bless all the people today as they go about their business. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.